There was a time, believe it or not, when Sonic the Hedgehog was a household name. With as much edge as Hedge, Sega's Blue Speed Demon was Killer App Incarnate, single-handedly selling the Genesis with lightning voracity and putting Mario's job in jeopardy. Then something changed, something no one saw coming. Sonic slowed down, and the games stopped being fun. And when exactly did ring racing cease to be an amphetamine-like assault of euphoria and become depressingly desiccated? Well, most contend it was around the time Sonic went 3D, games like Sonic Adventure becoming mired in subpar story filler, instead of focusing on fast-paced gameplay. To be sure, there were the occasional bad eggs, or egg men, before Sonic's Dreamcast debut, but only those that deviated from the franchise's signature. Speed. If Sonic's downfall began roughly around the time he went polygonal, there is one culprit we can acutely single out as the start of a long deceleration for Sega's flagship brand. Sonic the Fighters began as a working idea to feature the eponymous Hedgehog and his multi-tailed partner Miles in a beat-em-up brawler after their cameo inclusion in a previous fighting game sparked publisher interest. Sega's AM2 division, responsible for a wildly hot string of arcade hits which included the Mega Smash Virtua The Fighter, okay, just Virtua Fighter, spat in the face of skepticism and authorized the unthinkable. Sonic throwing his super sneakers away, sporting his best pair of boxing mitts, and stepping into the ring, opposed to collecting it. Easy cash grab? In retrospect, you betcha. It's hard to see the game as anything less than a poorly reassembled Virtua Fighter in disguise, slyly bearing its mega brand with a making money is so simple smirk of anticipation. But hey, all is fair in love and war as long as we're not twiddling our thumbs, reaching for the power off button. Lots of franchises feature standout titles that barely resemble the gameplay of their parents, and have earned their cult or mainstream honors as classics. Star Fox Adventures, Fallout 3, and Resident Evil 4 are just a few Daredevil sequels that strayed from formula. So why not Sonic? Let the diagnosis begin. Once you got past the laughably awkward title translation, the game was renamed Sonic Championship for its North American and European releases, you realized the fighter's greatest hook was seeing the Sonic universe in fully rendered 3D. Yeah, you weren't going around loop-the-loops just yet, but what eye candy! Familiar environments and colors bled this arcade ROM from start to finish, which isn't a stretch, but aside from the character models and cartoonish little mini-plot, this is where familiarity faded into fighting. And here's where we hit a speed bump, quite literally. What comes to mind when you think of Virtua Fighter? Certainly not speed. Intergalactic moon jumping, maybe. Seriously, who thought this was a good idea? Sonic couldn't run to save his life, and the controls were hampered by obscene camera angles that confused your X-axis movement, and likely led to your smackdown by the hands of a ruthless Metal Sonic. Technically, there is an acceptable list of combos to pull off in the fighters, but to win each bout, all you really need to do is mash the primary punch button to KO the short roster. Punch out that whiny sidekick Tails, that red dreadhead Echidna Knuckles, and even the adorable, loving, kind... Amy? Was the game that desperate to promote gender equality with the inclusion of a female character that it ran the risk of sponsoring domestic violence? Still, dropping her to the mat is good old comic mischief fun. The ultimate problem is that no matter who you play as, all the moves and animations are essentially the same, so the variety category loses marks. Being an arcade fighter before inciting cult ports, the replay return of a few dollars investment is underwhelming as most will finish the final fight at a clock time of under 30 minutes. The short and single game mode is underscored by the fact that, apart from the last couple of CPU enemies, this is a really easy game to beat. That is, until you make it to the end, and it's good night and good luck. Metal Sonic is such a pain in the metal backside to beat. Just one of his special moves is enough to take you out in just a few seconds. And this is simply one of the most frustrating playthroughs fathomable. Nevertheless, obscurity demands cult appreciation, even if the game blows polygonal pus chunks. We apologize for that sadly necessary visualization. So if you're tired of collecting and losing more rings than a veteran gold digger, why not step into one? The sound barrier remains intact, the difficulty is devastatingly disparate, the controls are a couple notches above crap, and apparently, knocking a girl to her knees is okay. If you can muster some reason to tolerate these failings, an hour of mediocre fun awaits you in Sonic Smash Brothers! <sighs> okay, Sonic the Fighters. The name sucks, but fine, Sega. Fine.